this is good news or bad news? It's probably good news, at least for most people. Um, photography certainly is quick reaching a zenith. Really dynamic range has not improved that much in many years. We have improves, improved clocking of the signal off of the sensor. Future Tech 9, of course, we have to come up with new crap, meaning Canon, Nikon, Fuji, so on and so forth. Have to come up with new technologies and new frou-frou to jam in their wonder boxes to get you to actually dump your old system and buy a new one. The uh, future technology that is always in the works, and they're always five years ahead. Obviously, Nikon's working on their mirrorless system. They said that they would be, but that's merely a mirrorless system. But the specific technologies, the limitation of silicon wafer technology has really quite peaked out. <laughs> it really has. Um, you actually can get enormously greater um, noise reduction by using like denoise projects or Topaz uh, plugins in uh, Photoshop for removing noise. Uh, I think a lot of this technology, the reason it's not currently in cameras, now there is a SNR uh, noise reduction because noise actually has known frequencies that are dialed out in camera when the actual signal is processed. This is SNR firmware. Uh, that's applied to the uh, clock single signal that is passed through the 80 converters and then noise is reduced but if um, future uh, camera processing can occur to the nature of which uh, you know you're shooting you know ripping off a bunch of shots and each shot and raw is like uh, 54 megabytes the ability to process that I mean it, even if you have a really fast computer with a lot of RAM it still takes time to process that noise out, and that's the only reason that doesn't... I mean, you, you know, it's not like you're taking one shot and waiting for the camera to process an enormous amount of noise out, as is done in Lightroom and Photoshop. This is something that a lot of people would like, that we'd have a wonder, wonder camera. I mean, we'd be shooting up an incredible high of cells with virtually no noise at all, but the problem is, is that the processing for that kind of noise reduction cannot exist and yet have a camera that can rip off a lot of shots at high megapixels. It just currently doesn't exist. So that's future technology one in no particular order. Number two is adaptive resistance technology, which I said was coming, and then Panasonic released a patent last year talking about it, which means that you will never have any specular highlight clipping. It means you could actually have single shot high dynamic range shots where if you have way too much spread between your shadows and your highlights, you could take a single shot at a known exposure that the camera tells you to take it at and this way you won't even have to worry about exposure of course you could choose your own but if you wanted to capture all the dynamic range between the deep shadows and the highlights and say you got 14 stops of DR that the camera will not clip the highlights and it will let the shadows saturate to the point where your highlights and your shadows on a normal camera will go from this to this so everything will be an even playing field so we'll have single shot HDR photography the other technology, I don't know how it's going to be implemented by Nikon or by who, and of course it was invented in 2007 by Kodak, is RGBW sensor technology, where we actually have a white trans photo site. And uh, the uh, low noise on this uh, for shooting uh, low light is uh, rather incredible. The white photo site is interpreting any and all frequencies, and this gives it an amazing uh, um, high ISO, specifically low light advantage for uh, low noise uh, image image uh, clocking off the sensor. Uh, silicon wafer technology, like I said, is is already nearly peaked out. Everything else is going to be in 80 converters and signal processing and noise processing. This is the reason why Nikon's put a ton of... Uh, Nikon number is right now number is king on this. Actually, the only people that are better than Nikon on this is a $50,000 phase one. Uh, they've actually perfected that uh, quite to the nth degree. So, other than phase one, we got Nikon sitting at king for low light, high ISO uh, image rendering that's dropped on the cards. Um, so, we have HDR, uh, RGBW sensor, and then uh, we've also got curved sensors, just like the human eyeball. You know, how simple is the human eyeball? You know, the, the, the premise of the uh, curved sensor is no different than the human eyeball, which has a curved sensor on the back, your retina, duh. And in this case, we could actually get enormous amounts of, uh, we'd have like super low element count lenses, which will have really high gain uh, off our uh, low intensity SNR, signal to noise ratio, like our intertonal details. Micro contrast will just jump through the roof. 
with the curved sensor we can actually create uh, one, two, and we can actually create two and three element lenses that are, you know, just absolutely the tits. Just amazing. Um, there won't be a huge amount of glass eating up that intertonal low gain detail. Glass is a capacitor. People think the glass is an insulator. I mean, light is electrical. If you think that there are photons, I, I, every time I hear the word photon, I just want to choke someone by the neck, not literally. There's no such thing as a damn photon. Light is electrical for crap's sake. Anybody that thinks that there's little particles traveling through your lens and hitting the back of your you're, you're an idiot. But I mean, you were taught that crap in school, but I mean, I, I shouldn't use the word idiot. It's just the crap that you were taught. All of that is atomistic quantum mechanics. It is atomism. Quantum does quantum quantity. It is atomism by definition. There's no such thing as a damn photon particle. It is purely a conceptual abstraction with no basis in reality at all. Light is electrical for crap's sake. Um, so we'll have the curve sensor, the RGBW sensor. We'll have the uh, single shot uh, adaptive resistance HDR sensor technology where the sensor will not clip highlights it will stop it will tell that particular photo site to capture the information at maximum photo well uh, uh, capacitance it will register that independently of everything else instead of the entire image uh, being clocked off the sensor it will clock off the highlights first and it'll work in arrays as the photo sites uh, reach maximum capacitance the issue with implementing that technology is in processing. Instead of clocking the entire image off the sensor, it's clocking it off in waves. It's clocking off the highlights and the midtones. Then lastly, for the longest time period, the shadows, is clocking that information off. So you have single shot HDR photography, and that'll be wonderful. It's like you take a shot of some crazy ass crap or super bright highlights and super dark shadows, single shot, boom. All the shadows are perfectly exposed. All the highlights, everybody will love that technology. Nikon and Sony and Canon, can't wait to roll that crap out in about five to six years from now. And that'll give you something. Oh my god, I gotta have it. I'm gonna sell off my shitty old camera. And I'm gonna buy this. Because I don't have to worry about exposure anymore. Everything will just be single shot. Boom. <laughs> oh my god. Been suffering from the flu lately for the past. I feel like crap. When you got bad flu, you feel like crap. Bad flu. Um, so that's... That's where things are going. Nikon and Canon and Sony and Fuji are always working five years in advance. They have to have new crap to give you. Every time someone says, why didn't they stick this in the camera? This technology's already out there. It's because they don't want to do that. they got to dribble it out like an eyedropper. All these companies eyedropper the, their technology out. All of them do. If they're like, oh man, we're going to give them everything. And then they'll be like, oh, God, we gave them everything. Now what are we going to come up with? we got to think of some new crap. Because once you've given someone everything, then what are you going to do to top everything? Because you got to keep them buying new crap. That's the only way all these companies stay alive. If they gave you everything, we're going to give them everything. Great. How the hell are you going to top everything? How are you going to top it? It's kind of like someone that like dated a supermodel. And then he gets divorced or leaves the suit. It's like, how are you going to top that? Everything else is going to be a bummer. <laughs> if Nikon or any of these companies gave you a supermodel camera, it's like, well, it's really good. It's like, yeah, but they could give you a lot more. If they gave you a supermodel camera, then you'd just hold on to it forever, and you couldn't really top it unless you introduce some radically awesome technology that would make you want to part with that thing in a couple, three years. They can't give you everything. they got to dribble it out with an eyedropper. That's the way all these damn companies work. Oh, you know that's true. All of them. That's the technology on the horizon. Curve sensors, like your eyeball, you know? You know how many lenses your eyeball has? Imagine a curve sensor and we got like a new line of lenses. There's like two element lenses, three element lenses. There's like a, a, major, uh, a major lens would be like... Oh my god, this one's got four elements in it. <laughs> that will really help uh, micro contrast and image rendering. You got a curve sensor and like a low element lens. Man, that'll really, that'll send photography uh, into a new level. The problem is the curve sensors. Like, how do you clean a curve sensor too? Mm, I'll have to think of a way to clean a curve sensor. So, curve sensors, adaptive resistance technology, RGBW sensors. 
And uh, also, and it's going to have to have major processing power. We have super, super duper uh, noise reduction, like you can apply in Photoshop or like denoise projects in camera. You could do that post processing. They could stick that in the camera where you can actually tell the camera while you're sitting there scratching your crotch, like after a photo shoot, just like apply extreme denoising to every image on the card. And then the camera will sit there like huffing and puffing. And then it was like, wham! It's like, oh my god, I shot this at 40,000 ISO and low light, and there's like almost no noise in this. That really, that absolutely is the future coming to uh, these cameras of the future. And by the future, I mean near term future, eight years and less. Thank you so much for watching. This is not my prediction, this is a reality, by the way. I can assure you everything I said in this video is coming to pass. It is coming to pass. Thanks so much for watching. I've got the flu. I feel like crap. Adios, dos vidanya, hasta la vega. All that crap. I'm going to go drink some NyQuil. Yeah, NyQuil. NyQuil and some orange juice. Yeah, and then I'm going to go...